Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to Summit Church. My name is Eli, and I'm so grateful to be with y'all this evening, grateful to be with those of us here in the room and those of us here online. You know, I, was, I know as we gather for worship, there's probably a bunch of us coming in from different places. Like, maybe we're having an awesome day. Maybe we're having a tough day. Um, maybe this is where we are all the time. Maybe this is like gathering for worship is central to our faith practice, or maybe we're just trying out something new. We're checking out, um, maybe this is for me. I don't know. I, I'm just curious. Well, wherever we're at, I'm grateful for every one of us that has chosen to be here, and we're all welcome. We're all wanted, and my hope and expectation is that as we come in with openness that we'll get to encounter God's goodness together in all kinds of ways. We're going to sing together. We're going to pray together. We're going to continue to reflect on Scripture together and think about this topic of forgiveness forgiveness and what does our faith have to tell us about forgiveness, how we experience it, how we practice it, all of this good stuff. And so, um, so as we come in, my hope is that we all get to experience God's goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. We get to experience some goodness through just connection with one another. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sing a couple songs. So those of us who are able, let's stand together and we're going to join in singing. May our lives of love and promise be a sign that God is near. May your eyes be ever on us. May you shine upon us here. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's the one we're living for. Let the anthem be of this family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May our home be marked with favor. May your blessings fill the air. May your grace be on our neighbors as we love and show we care. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's the one we're living for. Let the anthem be of this family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then love and peace shine through our hearts are open windows for you let love and peace shine through our hearts are open windows for you let love and peace shine through our hearts are open in windows to you let love and peace shine through our hearts are open windows for you as for me and my house we will serve the lord he's the one we're living for let the anthem be of this family as for me and my house we will serve the lord as for me and my house we will serve the lord he's 
the one we're living for. Let the anthem be of this family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let the anthem be of this family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah, I uh, I really love that song. Um, you know, as we think about experiencing God's goodness, because that's one of the things that I think about all the time when gathering for worship, is that we always have something to be grateful for. That gratitude is this really important practice in our lives. And we can express gratitude to our good and loving God. And also all of the good things that we experience are for the good of everyone. So like, it's not just for us that God pours that goodness into us. It's for the good of the world that we get to experience God's goodness and be shaped into God's likeness. And that that's part of this mission of God, that God is interested in bringing about redemption and restoration. And it's that same God who is worthy of all of our thanks and praise, who's worthy of every hallelujah that we have to give. Lord, to, to the Lord, to 
the Lamb, to the King of heaven praise, for He rose, now He reigns, we will sing forever, with a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name you alone deserve the glory the honor and the praise lord jesus this song is forever yours a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand Again, welcome. Um, I'm Eli. If you didn't catch that earlier, so grateful that you're here. As we gather, we hope that every one of us gets to experience God's goodness and the warmth of the Holy Spirit during our time together. Um, and we'd like to take some time to connect with one another. There are a few ways that we do that. One is, particularly if you're new here, there are QR codes on the back of a lot of the seats. And if you hit that, there's like a, a give us your information kind of thing. And if you do that, um, we will part. We are partnered with a food ministry locally here in Durango and a donation will be made in your name so you can be part of ministry happening right away, part of a good impact in our community. Um, so that's there for you. We would love to connect with you that way, especially if you're new. Um, and also, let's just take a minute to turn around and say hey to one another. So let's do that.
everybody, welcome to Summit Church. We hope that you guys enjoyed some sick turns this week in the fresh snow. A couple things that we want you to be aware of, but all of our announcements are on our website as usual. That's the place where you can find things that are up to date. February 11th and 12th is our baptism weekend. So if you are interested in getting baptized, please go ahead and sign up or talk to our front office. You can find all details about that on our website. And we have a team leaving for Kenya. They're gonna be gone March 4th through the 17th and they're going to Obaga, Kenya. And they're working with a group of women there called the Jewels of Obaga. And they're helping them, these women are widows. And so this team's gonna be supporting them and their children and their families. It's gonna be an amazing time. So there's gonna be information about that at the back of the sanctuary and they're gonna be in the cafe. And so all of the money from the cafe goes to support that team. So we'd love it if you'd support the team and get to know some of them and chat with them about what they're gonna be doing. Thanks so much for those sweet announcements, guys. Let's prepare our hearts for the message. Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And forgive us for our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Oh Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. First forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. When I was in worship last week, I, ha I was sitting right back there, and there's a little girl sitting right behind me. When she heard the 70 times seven, she said, oh, that's a lot. It was so sweet. Hello and good evening. My name is Tammy. And um, my husband, Jeff Huber, is the senior pastor, no, the lead pastor here at Summit Church. And we have a 21-year-old daughter who lives at home with us named Vika. Now, I want to tell you a little story about forgiveness that happened when Vika was still back in elementary school. I bought her tickets to see a Cavalia equestrian show in Denver. She was horse crazy at the time. And just about this same time, Jeff had bought a brand new truck. You may have seen his big blue monster. It's a Ford with a cattle guard, because I don't know why we needed a cattle guard, but our truck has a cattle guard. And Jeff, Vika was with Jeff when they bought the truck, and they brought the truck home, and Jeff said to me, well, you know, I had to buy the truck because Vika fell in love with it, and she's already named it Blueberry. <laughs> so Vika, of course, wanted to take Blueberry on our road trip to Denver to see the horse show. And I don't think Jeff could have gotten away with saying no to that because he had just told me he had bought the truck for her, pretty much. So Vika and I took the truck to Denver. <clears throat> All was good on the way there. We saw the show. Coming back home, coming down Wolf Creek Pass, I hit a rock. I hit a big rock. And I hit it just right, or maybe just wrong, because the steering starts. And I'm on Wolf Creek Pass down the part where it gets really steep. And so I'm just going so slow and end up having to stop in Pagosa and being towed home by a tow truck. When Jeff met us in Denver at the dealer, <laughs> I, could tr I could tell he was trying so hard to be calm. And he was trying to be loving. He said, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's just a truck. I'm glad you guys are okay. But I could tell he was really upset that I had just broke his brand new truck. And it cost a couple thousand dollars to fix it, and it was in the shop for a really, a really long time. And he may argue with this, but I know it took him a while to get over that, to forgive me for breaking his truck. 
And, um, and honestly, I'm not sure I've forgiven him for buying the truck in the first place. <laughs> Now, that's, that's kind of a, a silly story to get us warmed up about this, um, this idea of forgiveness. Uh, because I do want to emphasize that it takes some time, even for smaller things. And of course, bigger hurts and issues are going to take a long time to heal. Um, there's a video that Stacy's going to play for us that shows people with some deeper issues of forgiveness that I'd like uh, for us to take a look at. I think that's a powerful video because it kind of touches on some deeper things. And also, I think the video can be a little misleading in that it takes longer to forgive than just flipping around a cardboard, right? And so I want to emphasize that, that there is a process between one side of that cardboard and the other side. It's, for most people, not something you can just decide instantaneously. But when you do get to that place of forgiveness, there's freedom that is joyful and wonderful. So it's worth taking the journey towards, the, towards that. Now, if you've been following the sermon series, you know that Jeff and I went on a conference this past summer in Madison, Wisconsin, to a conference called uh, let's see if I get this right. The Educational, the International Educational <laughs> Institute on Agape Love and Forgiveness. And so in the title of the conference was Agape Love and Forgiveness. And today I want to highlight a little bit that piece of agape love, or some people pronounce it agape love. I grew up saying agape, so that's what I'm going to use tonight. But there's something special that happens when you combine agape love with forgiveness. It's, um, it's a powerful combination that can lead to healing and transformation. If you go to agapeloveandforgiveness.com, you will find that they uh, define agape love. Uh, agape is an ancient Greek word that means serving others for the other's sake. And that forgiveness is an expression of agape love as mercy towards a person who has been unfair for you, to you. So forgiveness flows from 
agape love. And when agape love in the New Testament, in the Bible, is the self-sacrificial love. Um, and it's the highest form of love that we find in the Bible. Um, in fact, oh, oh good, the, um, sorry, I'm a little mixed up in my notes here. The, um, the website also has a quote on its page that says, without forgiveness, there is no love. And without love, there is no forgiveness. Now, Jesus of Nazareth also taught that love and forgiveness are interconnected. Our weekly memory verse comes from the Gospel of Luke, and it reads, Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love is shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, who has been forgiven little, loves little. And so I want to put this memory verse in context. It comes from the story of the anointing woman that we find in the Gospel of Luke. And I'm going to read um, part of that story to you. I'm starting at Luke 7, 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman from that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the, at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him, meaning Jesus, saw this, he said to himself, if this man were really a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet since the time she came in. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love is shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, love loves little. So if you compare the behavior of the Pharisee with the anointing woman, you can see which person really knows Jesus and his message of love and forgiveness. The Pharisee is not a gracious host. In fact, he's downright rude to Jesus. He's judgmental of the anointing woman, and he has no idea what is unfolding in front of him. The anointing woman has been empowered. She comes uninvited to this dinner party, and her heart is so full of love and gratitude that it spills over. She weeps, and she serves and ministers to her friend Jesus, who has introduced her to the idea of forgiveness. And then there's that little parable in there with the two debtors. The one who owed more and was forgiven more was the one who eventually loved more. So this is encouraging, to me anyway. If I have a lot of things that need to be forgiven, if I let them go, there's going to be that much more room for me to grow and change and have a new life. The more indebted we currently are, the more loving we can potentially be. If we can accept the forgiveness that God wants desperately to give us, 
the guilt and shame we feel will die and be reborn into love and gratitude. Some of you may know the researcher, speaker, and author Brene Brown. Her first book, The Gifts of Imperfection, is one of my favorites. Her latest book is called uh, Atlas of the Heart. And on a website called Work of the People, I found an interview with Brene speaking about forgiveness. And I liked it enough that I would like to share some of that with you, with you now. I was at church and I was listening to Joe Reynolds, who is the is an Episcopal priest, tell, talking, telling stories about forgiveness and his experience doing pastoral counseling. And he said, in order for forgiveness to happen, something has to die. And I was like, I literally put my hand over my face. I was like, oh my God, the one concept or construct that I had left out that was it was the reason why forgiveness was never whole in my work was grief the reason why forgiveness is so hard is because in order for us to forgive something has to die and we have to grieve something um, and so I went back into the data had a couple of doctoral students with me and we started looking and it was the grief all through. It was the grief. It was, you know, he was telling the story about a couple where the, the guy had had an affair. And they were just, they knew that one of them, them wanted the marriage to end, but he couldn't let go of the shame. And she couldn't let him let go of the shame. And she couldn't let go of the rage. And, you know, Joe just said, you're going to have to bury and kill off this marriage as you know it today. Um, and grieve the loss of what this was in order for something new to be born. It's not ever going to be the same again. And I have goosebumps telling it. And when I went back, and even if it's forgiveness of someone you care about says something really hurtful about you, you have to bury the idea that that person doesn't have the capacity to hurt you or that wouldn't hurt you. And then something new has to be born. Um, and maybe it's deeper and richer and more beautiful, or maybe it's not going to be born, and maybe there's just a death and a loss. Um, but grief is an inherent part of forgiveness. Sometimes we just have to kill off and bury being right. And the power that comes from being, and the juice that we get from being right in order for forgiveness to happen. Um, which means the willingness to, to kill something off or bury something and grieve it makes being forgiven the ultimate act of love. Right? Yeah, so it like, yeah. It's powerful. Forgiveness is the ultimate act of love. That's because forgiveness involves grief. Forgiveness is about letting go. Forgiveness is an emotional process, excuse me. You know, when you're in the process of forgiving, it's probably going to hurt. And at some point, you will probably cry, like the weeping woman, or the anointing woman who weeped at Jesus' feet. You know, you may even ugly cry. If you ever get to that point where you're crying so hard that you just, it's like your face is all tormented and your eyes get puffy and you got snot coming out of your nose. And you may feel ugly in that moment and it's hard, but that might actually be you at your most beautiful because your tears are a sign of surrender, of letting go, and of acceptance. Right about now, you might be thinking sarcastic to yourself, Oh, great, Tammy, I am so glad I braved the roads to come here tonight for you to tell me that I'm going to have to be in pain and I'm going to have to cry and it's, it might hurt to go through this forgiveness process. The good news is you won't be alone and the process won't last forever. 
Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will be with you. In Jesus, we have a guide and a friend and a role model. Jesus' own earthly journey included struggle, pain, and tears. But that wasn't the end of his story. On the third day after he was crucified, died, and was buried, Jesus rose from the dead. And he lives. He lives today in you and me. Last Saturday, I went on um, a spiritual retreat in Pagosa with some of my friends in my small group. And Kathy Coy, the facilitator of the retreat and my um, spiritual director, shared this painting with us. That's a painting of Jesus. It's called The Hand of God, and it's by Yong Song Kim. Look how Jesus is smiling. And you can't really tell from the way we have it displayed, but you, Jesus has actually got his feet planted on top of the water and is reaching down through the water. I feel encouraged and hopeful when I look at this painting. It reminds me that Jesus is with us when we feel like we are sinking into the watery depths. Jesus extends his hand in friendship and love and pulls us up to stand next to him. And while you look at this image, I want to give you a little time to think about where you might be right now in your relationship with Jesus and where you are on this road to forgiveness. When you came in, the ushers gave you a little three by five cards and a pen. And so what I invite you to do is I just invite you to write on that three by five card where you are with forgiveness right now. Maybe you are struggling just with the whole idea of opening your idea to, the, to forgiveness. Maybe you're having a hard time accepting God's love and forgiveness for you. Maybe you're struggling to understand what, what a really hurtful situation means. What does it mean in this particular awful situation to forgive? What will that look like? It could be you don't know how to forgive yourself for something you've done. Whatever it is, wherever you happen to be tonight, don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Just write a phrase or make a little symbol on that card. Then, as an act of prayer and response, I'm going to invite you to come forward. And we have um, Stephen Ministers here with us tonight. And so when you're ready, we, I won't necessarily have the ushers direct you. If you're ready and if you even want to at all, you can bring your card up to, we have a table here and a table here, and there will be a Stephen minister standing by, so you can bring your card up and set it in the basket as a prayer, as saying to God, here I am, God, help me on this path to forgiveness. And then, if you're willing and you want to, the Stephen minister will be there to bless you. And they will, um, they can either put their hand on your shoulder if you're comfortable, or if you'd rather not, they can just raise their hands toward your, toward your head. And they will give you a blessing. Because it's not easy, this road to forgiveness. And we've been on it for a few weeks now. And I just really wanted to give you a moment to kind of check in with yourself and to check in with, with God. Where am I on this road to forgiveness tonight? So we're going to play a little music, and as you feel ready, bring up your cards and receive a blessing. Come forward as you're ready. i 
sweet portion Jesus, our confidence. Jesus, our faithful friend. Jesus, our ever present help in truth. He calls us by our name. He looks us in the face. He welcomes us as friends before the Father. Jesus, our confidence. Our faithful friend, Jesus, our ever present help in trouble. He calls us by our name, He looks us in the face, He welcomes us as friends before the Father. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, thank you for meeting us right where we are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for making your life about forgiving, forgiving us. Help us to be your presence in the world. Help us be Jesus Christ in the world by becoming more forgiving people. We ask this in your, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. As we continue in our worship, we're continuing in a time of response. You know, we just had some time um, where we're, you know, reflecting on what is it that God's inviting me into? Like, am I, am I, do I have a sense that there's a step I can take? Um, You know, whatever that might be. Uh, And, you know, I'm going to, try to take that step or continue to reflect on what might God be inviting me into. Um, And so we're going to continue into this time of response, and we're going to sing. We're going to sing a couple more songs together. So um, so as we continue in our time of worship, I'm going to invite those of us who are able to stand together, and we're going to sing a little bit more.
You're the promise and you are the keeper. You're the one who holds all things together, together, together. You're the one who holds all things together, together, together. You're the one who holds all things together. trust the Father who sees when you call me will I listen will I follow where you lead I will follow where you You're the first, you're the last, you're forever. You're the one who brings spring out of winter. You're the promise and you are the keeper. You're the one who holds all things together. You're the first, you're the last, you're forever. You're the one who brings spring out of winter. You're the promise and you are the keeper. You're the one who holds all things together, together, together. You're the one who holds all things together, together, together. You're the one who holds all things together. first you're the last you're forever you're the one who brings spring out of winter you're the promise and you are the keeper you're the one who holds all things together 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 you're the one who holds all things together together Together, you're the one who holds all things together. Amen. You know, I, I know as we uh, continue to reflect on forgiveness and that it can be a really difficult journey and a journey that involves grief and loss and um, facing tough stuff. I'm grateful that uh, that our God holds all things together. And I don't know about y'all, but sometimes it's like I just have to trust that God's going to hold me together because I'm just falling apart in the midst of some, you know, that just happens as part of life, you know. And our God is always with us. You know, we even those of us that love the snow in the winter, when we experience that kind of internally, we can trust God's grace to continue to warm us up and thaw us out and bring life into places that just seemed like they were too far gone. And all of that is rooted in God's goodness. And so we're going to sing one more song together. And we learned this one last week, so hopefully uh, hopefully a couple of us kind of remember a little bit how it goes. But it's easy enough to pick up, so we're just going to go out singing about God's goodness.
No heart of death can separate Your steadfast love who can escape Your faithfulness and endless sea So full of grace and mercy We sing God is so good God is so good God is so good He's so good to me Haunted by the past no more My innocence has been restored Forgiveness flows from your veins Your kindness shown in all your ways We sing God is so good God is so good God is so good He's so good to me Oh, there's never been anyone like you Never been anyone like you You are worthy You are worthy Oh, there's never been anyone like you. There's never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. And hope is rising like the sun. The old is gone, the new is come. I fix my eyes. On Christ alone My rock, my shield My cornerstone We sing God Is so good God Is so good God Is so good He's so God, you are good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. God. y'all pray with me. Lord God, we are so grateful for your immense goodness. We're grateful for your loving kindness. We're grateful for your love that is generous, that uh, is a love that seeks the good of others, us included in that. And so God, may we receive your goodness May we receive your love. May we receive your grace in ways that continue to to reshape us, in ways that continue to make us more alive, in ways that continue to make us more present and shape us into the likeness of Christ. 
And as we're filled, may we be sent and empowered by the Holy Spirit to be that restorative presence, to carry your love with us, to be the presence of Jesus Christ to one another. And so we ask this and we offer you ourselves in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, just before we go, a few things. If you'd like to kind of continue in this process of worship, there are a few things that you can do. Um, You can give, which again, there are just awesome things that happen when you do. Uh, You certainly don't need to, and the church doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your money, but awesome things happen when we learn to give. And so, um, so you can give online via text, via the app. There are boxes at the exits. Um, We also, maybe there's something came up and you'd like further prayer. Our Stephen Minister who are here to give you a blessing. They'd love to talk to you and pray for you, pray with you. Um, They're available to you also after the service. And if you want to continue to sort of reflect on this and dig into Scripture and prayer a little bit into this whole thing, we've got our meditation moments available on our app and the website. Um, So that's all available for you as you go. And so I'm going to invite us now to go in peace and serve God, and we will see you all soon, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. We sing God.